everyone. Hope you had a good reading week. Welcome to the double header video for week 6 and 7 of Acts 231. Um, in week 6 we talked all about loans for the whole week and this is part of chapter 3 and also part of chapter 5. So a loan is basically just an annuity. It's a series of level payments that are made but they're made to pay off a particular amount at time zero. So the time zero amount is the loan amount and with a loan we always assume that payments are made at the end of each time period. It wouldn't really make sense to get a loan and then immediately have to make the first payment right then and there. So the payments are always at the end so we're dealing with an annuity immediate. So we looked at one way of obtaining information at any particular time for a loan and that was writing out a full amortization schedule which gives us at every time how much the payment was, how much interest, how much principal, and what the outstanding balance was. But it would be really time consuming to do that if we ever wanted to know a single piece of information. So we developed two methods of calculating the outstanding loan balance, the prospective method and the retrospective method. The retrospective method looks backwards and takes the accumulated value of the loan minus the accumulated value of any payments that have been made. And the prospective method just looks forwards and calculates the present value at the time that you're looking at of all the future payments that are remaining to be made on the loan. And those two methods should always give you the same answer. The last thing we looked at that week was a different method of repaying a loan, which is the sinking fund method, where all we do in terms of our contract with the lender is pay off the interest as it goes. So each year we pay off the same amount in interest, and the loan really never accumulates in value. But then separately, we build up a fund, which will give us the loan amount at the time the loan is due. So that's known as the sinking fund method, and we can calculate the total payment under that method as well. Then there was reading week, and then in week 7 we started looking at annuities where the payments are no longer level. So we get into a whole different situation here when the payments of the annuities are not the same every period. We looked at a number of different situations. If we have a geometrically increasing payment, so each payment is 1 plus g times the previous payment, what we can do there is basically we still get a geometric series, and we can develop a result there to calculate that easily just using our knowledge of geometric series. We basically calculate a new interest rate, I star, that's artificial, and we calculate the annuity based on that. If we have arithmetically increasing payments, we need to do a little bit of a trick. Either multiply or divide through the entire series by V, and then subtract them from one another, and then we'll get a series that we know how to sum. Because in that case, we end up with a geometric series with increasing coefficients. To get that, we as I mentioned, developed that result, and then we had these whole set of new annuity symbols which were for increasing annuities. So IA angle N is an increasing annuity where the first payment is one dollar, the second payment is two, the third is three, etc. And those symbols can get us the answer for any series of payments that's arithmetically increasing. With perpetuities, the results are very similar. We just basically take the limit as n goes to infinity in both those cases, so that's not too difficult. And we can even look at decreasing annuities, where the first payment starts off at n dollars, the second payment is n minus 1, then n minus 2, etc., until the very end when the last payment is 1 dollar. And we never assume that the payments go negative. We assume they stop when they get to 0 dollars. The last thing we looked at was the investment year method, which is just a way uh, to get a little bit of a more complex look at how interest rates might behave. So a bank might have a promotion on that rewards people for staying invested for a long time or offers a bonus interest to new customers, something like that. And the investment year method is how we calculate the actual interest rate earned. So an investment year uh, set of interest rates has select rates which depend both on the initial year of investment and how long the money has been in that account. And then they have ultimate rates which are after a certain point the bank doesn't care how long your money's been invested, everyone in uh, that particular year is going to earn that rate, no matter how long their money has been invested. So to use a select and ultimate interest rate table, we always go across the row until we get to the end, and then down the column when we're looking at uh, how much interest is being earned in each succeeding calendar year. The portfolio yield method is basically ignoring all of the ulti or sorry, all of the select rates and only using the ultimate rates. So not a very good approximation depending on the situation, but that's what we call uh, the portfolio yield method. So that was everything for this week. Good luck for your quiz three on Monday and see you in class.